Hi, this is Lori from Time to Be Creative. I'm back here with you to do more pages of the wedding album that uh, I've been working on. And I'm going to just start working on some of the pages. I did a little bit of prep work, but I'll explain to you what I've done. Um, this is the book. Uh, the last video we put the um, photo mats in and I'll be embellishing those a little bit I think as, uh, as I go forward but I wanted to get something on the pages we also did the binding the spine and so we're at the place now where it's time to start really getting to work and, and adding some things to the page so this will be my first page I'll have the um, inside cover not sure what I'm going to do with that yet but I thought I'd like to put on this first page um, just a little spot where you could slip a photo in of the bride and the groom and then I'll do some kind of the groom the bride on on top uh, when I go back and embellish so what I've done is just cut two pieces of uh, patterned paper that I've been using and this is by Paper Studio again called Blanc Boutique it's a pearl finish uh, one thing that I've been finding is that everything sticks to it but it does come off fairly easy but even with the um, inking the edges you kind of have to be careful and keep your work surface really clean so I've just um, cut two pieces of paper three and a half by four and three quarters and I think I'm just going to put these right next to each other like that. I uh, cornered the edges of that first piece of paper and cornered the edges of uh, the second. And um, I think what I want to do is cut the center out to kind of make a frame. Now, years ago, before I really started scrapbooking I don't know why I purchased this I went to a demonstration with my sister and purchased um, a few things from a company called uh, creative memory memories I think it is and so I have these little plastic circular oval forms and you just put that down on your paper and then you get three of these little cutting guides. They go together like that when you want to store them. And there's three different lengths of how far away from your trimming edge it'll cut. For some reason I always use this red one. And so I'm just going to cut the center out. And all you do is put those little feet in the groove that you want to use sometimes it messes it up and tears the paper but most times it cuts really well you just give it some moderate pressure of course my cutting mats moving around on me and hopefully it's the way you want it to look probably should have gone with maybe something a little smaller but I think I'm going to use this anyway just try to line it up as best as you can now I wanted the book to stay fairly white accenting with some light like rose pink and silver and then I'll be coming back in and doing some embellishing Gosh, I'm really having trouble with this cutting that. Let's see. I think that'll work well enough. So I've been inking my edges. With this Studio G rose pink, although I don't know the official name of it because I can't ever find it on the container. So I'm just going to come in and ink the edges. The other thing I've been doing is I've been using some of my alcohol markers. You'll see in some of the other 
pages as we worked through the book. Um, and just picking up a few little elements on the uh, paper pack and coloring them in, giving them just a little bit of color. I also used um, some chalk. Just got uh, HSN had a no, it was QVC had a crafting show, and um, they haven't had too many of those lately. And they had a gal on showing uh, this uh, chalk set by Pebbles. And so I've used alcohol markers, also uh, purchased through QVC. They're called uh, Spectrum Noir. I think they're similar to the Copic markers, but the Copic markers, I'm sure, are wonderful, but um, they're not my budget. So, I chose to get these Spectrum markers, and uh, I've been doing some coloring, which I absolutely love, but you're supposed to also be able to color glass or beads. I went to a like a thrift shop and picked up some little beads and some other tchotchke kind of things that I could use in books. And I'm hoping that I can color those to uh, work with some of the different projects I have going. So all you want to do is just uh, gently go around. And again, I use, if my ink pad is more of a sponge pad, I go ahead and just use that as my inker instead of going around with a tapping it into a pad and then putting it on. So now I think with these um, I want them to pop a little bit on the page so I think I am going to come in with one of my alcohol markers. This is what it looks like Spectrum Noir. This is PP3 which I have no idea what that stands for. It's got a fine tip and it's also got a chisel tip. The only thing I don't like about them is that I really have a, a tough time getting them open. And um, they are refillable. I haven't tried to refill them. So I think I'm just going to come in here and I've just uh, color on the white and kind of make this pop. Now on some of the other um, pages that you'll see that I'm working on, um, I've only been coloring in a little bit here and there, but I thought with with this little frame and this pattern, it wouldn't be that much to go ahead and color. And then if I get outside the line, because the um, point on that is not super small, um, I picked up in the discount been somewhere this um, blending pen for alcohol markers and I can just it works like a little eraser so if I got outside of my lines at all I can go ahead and just come back in with that I think you want to try to do that while it's still um, damp and I can clean that up a little bit I could also dust this with the chalk and that would work work well too. That probably would even be a little quicker. But um, I thought that might look nice. I don't know if I'll, I'll offset those a little bit. It might be hard getting the picture in there if I do that. So I think I might just go that way and leave the top open so they can slip in a picture. Now I'll go ahead um, off camera and finish coloring in um, that paper and then I'll attach those. I'll be using liquid glue and uh, attach those to that front page. And then what I thought I would do for this second as I open the book um, 
I didn't get my paper on as nicely as I like down here at this bottom edge, so I wanted to do something. So I just took a small piece of paper. Again, patterned. Now this time I chose to match what I have there on the base. And this is about two and a half by five and three quarters. And then I just had a, I have a small uh, Martha Stewart punch. Oop, I misspoke. This one's an EK punch. And I just went around the edge, gave it a little bit of a design. I inked my edges, and um, I hopefully you can see that I did put a little bit of the alcohol ink here and there, just to pick that up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I'm just going to do the outside corner, outside edge and the bottom, and then I'll make a tag to put there. So I need to find my which could be a challenge. There it is. So I'm going to the glue. This is the liquid glue uh, of preference that I use. I use Gorilla Glue too sometimes. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue on those two outside edges where I don't have the uh, hole punch. You can do a scalloped edge. You could do uh, any uh, some kind of a curve or if you have any any other kind of a punch or you might have some kind of a die cut just something that gives it a little shape I'm going to put a little bit of the glue there and I'm just going to put that right down in that spot and of course I'll come back and we'll embellish that page like we will with most of the rest of the book and I had some difficulty with one of the pages. I didn't get the, uh, these are envelopes that I started out with, and um, I had difficulty getting the one envelope on. It was crooked, and I couldn't get it to release, so I had to tear it off. And when I did that, I messed up some of my cardstock right here in the binding. So I want to cover that somehow. So what I did was take another punch that I have. This one is a Martha Stewart punch. And it just like makes like a little flower strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and uh, glue those in that spine to cover up that mistake. So I have them for each section, each page. This page here, I'm just going to keep it um, simple. And I just made um, a little photo mat and I punched my corners with oops, sorry, with this uh, round edge punch that also gives you the slots to slip in uh, a picture very easily. So I'm just going to I think I'm going to put that up there and then I can do some embellishing or maybe some lettering. I might be able to put another little picture or something down here. So I'm going to put this up towards the top of this page. And for this I'm going to use my gun, my tape gun. I didn't put on any additional lights and now it looks like it's, it's starting to get dark here. And I'm hoping you can see me okay. So I'm using my half inch tape gun. I want to be careful not to run over those slots. So you can come back in and slip in a picture. And then I don't want anything to catch either on those uh, corners. So I usually put a little drop of glue on these corners.
and come in with your bone folder and just give that a little press. And I've got some extra glue here from the glue tape. You can just rub that off. So that leaves me some additional space to do some decorating. So that's page one, two, and three. Now for this page, um, I thought I would do a waterfall, just a small one. I was going to do some um, fun pages, and before you know it, I had all my base paper on and didn't put in any extra to do anything fun. So I thought, well, let me try a waterfall. So uh, what I did was just measure my paper. Now this is not two-sided paper, so I had to cover the inside. And these measured... I keep forgetting where I put my ruler. Let's see, four inches by four and a half. And of course, um, so that would really would be five, because I have a half inch fold. So what I did was I cut those those uh, strips of paper. I'm only doing three. And I cut out a, a larger piece of cardstock, a nice sturdy piece. And I covered that with the paper that I wanted on the inside of my waterfall. I used a different pattern paper of the whole project on these other pages. So I had, let's see, you want your base cardstock paper that you have, and then you want your paper that measures the size that you want for your book. This is a nice way to add some additional pages to a book. When you, and you're not taking up a lot of, of space. So then I would I came in here and I just took a half inch and scored it. And then gave that a good press. And I rounded my corners. And of course I inked, and I covered this, say that was my cardstock, and then I just added my glue here, oh I trimmed my edges, I like to cut these in, Let's trim those off, put my glue, and then you just glue it on there. And then you would glue the next piece and then the next piece. And then I came back in and took my measurements, rounded my edges, and I glued in my complementing paper. Well, that's not a very good piece to show you. And I would measure this, come in, and then glue that in. If you have double-sided paper in the project that you're using, that's wonderful, because then you don't have to worry about that. And then I just came back in with little strips of complementing paper, cut them to a half an inch, glued them down, and that's where we are. So now I can adhere this, but I want to add another piece of decorative paper here, and I had a piece cut that I was going to use, here it is, so I'm just going to add that there, and I'm going to tape it down like a belly band so I can slip something underneath there. So I'm going to put that there. 
And then before I'm finished with the book, I'll do some kind of a little latch or closure here to hold these pages down. But for right now, I'm just going to get that glued in. And uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and use my gun. So I'm just going to run my tape down my edge of my back piece. This um, tape gun is very convenient and wonderful. But if you don't have one, that's okay. You could use liquid glue. I've already purchased um, tape that didn't fit the machine and then just use the tape. It can be a little annoying. But you can use score tape. I'm not sure that a glue stick would hold as well. But this paper is, like I said, um, a pearl paper and it's very um, slick. So uh, I'm not sure on this particular paper um, that a glue stick would work. So I'm just going to eyeball this and put it where I think it would look. Nice. Well, I hope this doesn't ruin my paper. Well, I don't think I got that as straight as I probably could have. Gosh, I'm probably out of out of frame here. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, so you're going to give that a good press, and then again, they say that the glue tape never really dries. So if you want to use um, something to slip a pocket or a journal tag in or a picture. You want to use your liquid glue. So I'm putting liquid glue there. Make sure I got that in a good spot. And then I thought I would come in and add this to the front cover of that um, waterfall. And uh, I could also put a, or whoever is going to use the book, could put a little picture there. But I'm going to come back and do that later because I think I'm going to put those little um, like pop-up tabs on there so it elevates it just a little bit to give it a little dimension. And I, I picked that because I'm using on the opposite page uh, a frame that I cut out. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. It was the center. Again, I used that um, little system by Creative Memories and cut out that center. And so I'm just going to put that there so those pages kind of work together. Again, I'll do some embellishing. I'm going to leave the top open. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue along these outside edges. And I want to try to leave as much room as I can to get a photo in there. The other nice thing about liquid glue is you have a little bit of 
little bit of time and a little bit of wiggle room. I just love things that sparkle. I think that looks very pretty. All right, so that's another page. Now on this page, I don't want to go. I didn't want to go too crazy with the book, so I'm just going to do a pocket here. And what I did on this page is I used some of the accent paper that I used on some of the uh, photo mats, and I just cut. Um, a square piece, well it's a rectangle piece, I just cut that and it measures three and a half by looks like six and three eighths, but you can use whatever measurements work for your book. And then I just took another strip about two inches, two and a half inches wide and I used another Martha Stewart punch that I have. I have a hard time with these punches and lining them up and getting them to look right. But uh, this one went okay. And then I just curved in the edges. I don't know if you can see that. To try to make it look fancy. Kind of look like an envelope maybe. And this is where I did come in and I did use the alcohol marker. I put a little bit of green on the leaves, um, but I did that with chalk. And that was from my set from Pebbles. It's a really nice set. You get 60 chalk colors, iridescent and um, basics. And this is what it looks like. So I just came in here with this little alligator clip, and you pick up your little bumble ball, your little cotton pom-pom, rub it in the color you want to use, and I just dusted it over top of that white area. Uh, they say don't brush off the crumbs because then it'll leave marks, so I just kind of tapped it over the trash can. So again, I'm going to use this as a pocket. And I'm going to put that there. I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge because I just like the way that looks. Again, I'm only going to um, glue the three outer edges. And again, I'm going to use the uh, liquid glue. Sometimes I don't get this zip dry glue on quick enough and it starts to dry up. I have to apply a little bit more. But it seems to hold pretty well once I get it where I want it. So once I punched my little trim there and in, uh, did it with the alcohol marker and then the chalk, I thought I needed something else on these edges so I made a couple of little flowers. I punched out with my uh, Tim Holtz die cut, I punched out some petals and made these flowers. And I do have another video um, with those flowers on it. But it, you also might want to check out uh, a gal by the name of Tamika. Uh, T M I K A, I believe it is. She's got some uh, YouTube videos and she takes you through and shows you how to make these flowers. Now, I, I ink my edges um, and I did that to match. So I'm going to go ahead, I have my hot glue gun plugged in. So I'm just going to add a little glue on the bottom there. You know, now, now that I'm busily working and talking, I'm thinking I'm probably not in frame. So just adding a little more glue. That second one. They look adorable. And so, in keeping with that look and that theme, on the opposite side, the opposite page, 
here. Uh, I came back in with the same coordinating paper, cut out another more square look. Let's see how square we are. This is five and looks like five and two eighths by four and seven eighths. And I don't really, sometimes uh, I guess you could have a punch that could punch out that center. I didn't have anything like that. So I just cut, traced a shape that I liked and um, cut that out with my X-Acto knife. Inked my edges. I'm going to put that, I think, right in the center of that page. And then I have a two-inch scallop punch. Uh, I got this on the internet. This is by Paper Studios. And so uh, I just punched out a, a circle of pink that I thought would work. Inked my edge. Because I think I want to put that there. And then I cut out, again with the die cut, some petals out of the silver printed paper and then uh, ink the edges with my alcohol markers. Put that little flower together and I'm going to